The legacy newspaper industry is fighting rising costs, consolidating ownership, and increased demand for digital content. Carl Bernstein is the Pulitzer Prize-winning investigative journalist and author. He's got a new memoir out. It's called Chasing History, a kid in the newsroom. It covers not the Watergate story that he is famous for, but his first job as a newspaper copy boy. And Carl, thanks for being here today. It's, uh, it's good to see you. I, you look back at this, and this was covering when you kind of started out, just as a teenage boy, started out in the newspaper business um, back in the 1960s. When you're looking back and kind of reflecting on all of this, how do you, how do you feel about that, given where the, the news business has come to this point? Was this almost like going back and, and reporting on a foreign land at this point? No. Uh, look, I was 16 years old. I went to work uh, at the Washington Star when, in my native city of Washington, D.C., and at age 16, I probably got the best seat in the country. And for the next five years at this great newspaper, being uh, mentored by the greatest newspaper people of their day, I got to see everything that was happening in this country, probably, probably. the civil rights revolution, going to the White House, under Jack Kennedy, going to his press conferences, covering the march on Washington uh, at the age of 18. It was an extraordinary journey, uh, and pretty much everything that I learned in this business, all the things that we did in Watergate, there's a straight line from my apprenticeship at the Washington Star to the Watergate coverage across town at the Washington Post. And really what I learned in those days even with all the technological changes that have come about in the news business, the basics are still the same. To really be a good reporter, you're after the best obtainable version of the truth, which is a phrase Woodward and I used in Watergate a lot, but the phrase goes back to the Washington Star. We called it the complexity of the truth. And so you can have all the technology, but the objective is to get out of the office to go knock on doors, like you see in all the president's men, to get to one source after another, to make sure that you're right by having multiple sources, by going back to your original sources time after time, because the real objective is to get at this complexity of the truth, especially the context of it. The limit these days is that there's not enough time for reporters to do some of these things because there's been so many cutbacks in newsrooms and in budgets. Do you think that's true or not? I think it's nonsense. <laughs> All it takes is one or two or three reporters to do what I was just talking about. It's not about cutbacks in newsrooms. If you have a few reporters, look, we have a big problem in that news organizations very often are more interested in money and uh, then they are in the best obtainable version of the truth. However, you get a few good reporters. If they don't just go Google things, if they don't just occasionally get on the telephone in combination with Google, and they get out of the office and they start going to their sources, not going to visit them in their offices perhaps, but going to see them at night in their homes or at dinner, when there, there's a real chance to get information when people are not under pressure, they'll get the stories. And incidentally, there is fabulous reporting going on all over the country today, but particularly in Washington, uh, at the White House, the reporting on the Trump presidency, I would say, uh, by the greatest number of news organizations, is really the best reporting out of the White House uh, that I've seen really in my, in my lifetime. So it can be done. It just takes a determination and a commitment by news organizations. And yes, it requires a financial commitment, but what it really requires is getting away from the laziness that permeates our business today. 